Customer service says the focus this year was not on design or hardware changes or features. The Q990C, as far as I can reckon, is a Q990B with a moderate software update. The review of a new product that is overwhelmingly not new uh, just doesn't animate my spirit animals enough to make my traditional single system review. I sense a C review would overlap about 98.7% with this B review I released late last year, which not to be self-serving remains eminently relevant. Anyway, to make this whole exercise interesting, for me at least, which I do sense as being the most important thing, I need to challenge the C with a sassy rival. One that is, let's say, quite distinct in execution, but arguably in the same sound class, which is the Sonos Arc with a Gen 3 sub and two ERA 300 rear speakers. Three years ago, I did a fight video between the Arc system and the Q90R. It took my channel from this to not this. There were views in there, but it requires um, an expensive microscope. So perhaps now, three years later, after some seasoning on my end, it's time for a Never Enough Tech throwback rematch between Samsung and Sonos with the latest wares. Will we be keeping score? I'm afraid so. Throw up the friggin' scoreboard. Future me is a great assistant. And try not to hyperventilate if I don't score to your liking. Just breathe and remember you're watching YouTube and people on YouTube are always right. But you know, comment over and over again about how right I am. I'm gonna score on these factors. The weighting or how many points might be awarded in each category is subjective based on my predilections. My video, my predilections. Throughout this video, I am assuming you possess a basic level of understanding of soundbar features. If you find that my words are going full gobbledygook, um, you might benefit from my Soundbar 101 video where I elaborate on the jargon and why it matters when making a Soundbar purchase. Okay, the elephant in the room and first up, price. The C right now is $1,500 in North America. I know my savvy viewers, especially in other regions, often find it for like $35 based on the many comments. Um, kind of a braggy bunch in that way you are. Margaritas not gone, I'm a the ARC bundle varies in price based on promotion, but will probably settle between $23 and $2,500. So I think on average it's going to be about $1,000 more than the C, and that's probably generous for Sonos. The fact that this comparison is happening with something like a 5 to 3 price ratio does not look great for Sonos, which means Samsung gets... Three points. The truth hurts sometimes. All right, design and build. The Q990C has the exact same dimensions, weight, and style of the B. As I mentioned last year, the B is a significant improvement styling-wise over the 2021 Q950A. The most important changes include the swapping of the scratchy punishment blanket with metal grills, and the migration of the main display from the top of the bar to the front, so those who sit and watch TV can see it. I mean, I'm super healthy and always stand hovering over the sound bar when watching TV, but I hear others do it different. So the ugliest sound bar ever conceived got upgraded to a six last year. It's still a six this year. The bar shape is unique in that it has eight sides to support its many drivers pointing in many directions. This is the fourth model in a row with this exact shape. Controls are on top, and the ports are kind of distributed randomly along the bottom of the bar. The rear speakers underwent a significant style change last year, with the B again removing the rug and putting the speaker on a pedestal of sorts, and adding some unexpected curviness for acoustic enhancements, so they say. The submodule is an emotional black hole, a nondescript rectangular thing with the exception of this raised acoustic lens here on the side. Again, this is a B change, not a C. Though worth noting, last year this sub's weight went up a few pounds, suggesting that starting last year with the B, this sub received some 
less visible hardware enhancements. The acoustic lens does not seem heavy duty enough to make up for all the weight difference. Design wise, the ARC system is far more creative. It is eponymous, being shaped in accordance with its name. Sporting a 270 degree curved front body with and 76,000 precision drilled holes to make the grill. The status display is your typical pre-era Sonosphere, um, along with the classic pre-era control set on top. The Era 300s that were released earlier this year are strikingly original in shape, particularly in the soundbar surround speaker space. The 300s remastered control set includes a dedicated inverted volume slider on top, along with more control options in the back that are unique to the Eras. Note that the 300's Bluetooth and line-in capabilities are disabled when they're paired as rears, which makes total sense, but it's still kind of sad. Relative to pre-era products, the 300's display has been dramatically shrunk and moved to the front of the speaker. About 50% of the speaker is covered by a grill, the rest solid plastic. You'll find two rubber ski strips on the bottom for stability. You'll also find the mounting holes down there. The sub Gen 3, well, it looks like the same sub we've had for a long, 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 long time. Though it's still nice looking, I think, and well built with a custom resin. The Gen 3 released in 2020 has the very recognizable hole right through the middle, just as the G1 did back in the 60s or whatever. Overall, the Arc system looks much fresher, has a more consistently solid feel about it, even though it's largely made of plastic. It comes across as sculpted as opposed to assembled and is much more living room cooperative. The one kind of practical wrinkle here is that the 300s are very large, at least relative to the ones and 100s. They can easily sit on a stand or be wall mounted, which Sonos would love to sell you Sonos priced hardware for that, or sit on a table. But fortunately or unfortunately, they are too big to naturally fade into the background. If the sugar and spice half of your union was supportive of a soundbar system due to its reduced footprint, the 300 size might result in a bit more spice than sugar. Fair warning. Nonetheless, we're giving the Sonos system a point for looking fleek. Channel count. The C is an 11.1.4 channel system. It has 22 drivers distributed amongst the four components. The Q900 soundbars since mid-2020 have had 15 drivers and all been 7.0.2 speakers with drivers arranged like this. The wide angle channels being angled a little rearward were an industry first, exclusive to the Q900 soundbar series until the JBL bar 1300 X came along this year. Notably, all the front channels are fortified with two woofers and a tweeter, which is a good omen for sound quality. The rear speakers have three woofers each, one woofer per channel, both a 2.0.1 channel speaker. This is the third year with this arrangement. The sub-module, well, it's a sub with an 8-inch woofer, which is a very lukewarm size. Not comically small, but perhaps disappointing for a flagship soundbar kit where expectations are... I don't know, something bigger than 8 inches. The ARC system I'm reviewing is a 7.1.4 system and has 25 drivers distributed amongst the components. But for now at least, Sonos has decided to use only 23 of them. We'll get to that. The ARC soundbar has 11 drivers and is a 5.0.2 speaker, carrying two fewer channels than the C and four fewer drivers, including two fewer woofers in the front channels as the left and right are merely woofer tweeter pairs, where the C has dual woofer tweeter trios, as a reminder. So bar on bar, Sonos falls short noisemaker count-wise. No getting around that, though the Arc is no slouch. The Era 300's an interesting case study for sure. It has six drivers arranged in a manner that gives off the impression of a 3.0.1 speaker with drivers in the front both sides and on top. The front driver here, yes, a tweeter and the only noisemaker behind this understated front grille, where silly people might assume is where the majority of sound comes from, 
Um, well, anyway, this tweeter is benched, completely muted when connected as a rear speaker, making this functionally a 2.0.1 speaker, though with woofer tweeter pairings on its two horizontal channels, which are typically just woofers. So it's a well-fortified 2.0.1 speaker, which matters. The 300s also depart from the typical soundbar 2.0.1 rear speakers, not only in shape, but the fact that the two horizontal channels are facing opposite directions, 180 degrees, as opposed to 90 degrees. This has some implications on placement. Specifically, there is no longer a reason to angle the front of the speaker, the big oval, at you, but rather it makes more sense to face the oval directly towards the front wall. So the inner side firing channels are oriented towards you, acting as a direct rear channel. I suggest situating these right next to your couch and then pushing them back a foot or two if possible. That arrangement is probably going to get you close to your sweet spot. Um, just tweak positioning from there. Yes, the Era 300s have weirdness spilling out of its many pores, which can be explained mostly by the cold hard truth that this speaker's prime objective is to be a standalone 3D music machine, not a surround speaker, though it's got some chops in that role for sure. The sub has two six inch force canceling woofers to reduce external vibration, which is not the worst thing if you share walls or floor ceilings with neighbors. So the Q990C has more channels and this ARC system has more drivers, technically. All of this will be octagoned in the sound quality section. Codec support. Sonos continues to Heisman Cinema Geek customers by withholding support for anything above DTS Digital 5.1. So no DTS HD Master Audio or DTSX support. Otherwise, Sonos supports the remainder of the standard codec suite. Samsung supports the whole standard suite. Gonna give the C two points here for not dissing your sweet DTS Blu-ray assemblage. I'm being fairly punitive to Sonos, but maybe this is the exact boot in the rear that gets Sonos to finally start doing everything I tell them to do. Ports, Samsung. We got eARC, two HDMI inputs, optical, and USB for maintenance. Sonos, just eARC. So optical and USB don't matter so much as optical prohibits 3D audio transfer and USB, well, just update over Wi-Fi already. The USB port on the C we know for certain is not supposed to be used, judging by its placement. Both systems have eARC, which is important. What is eARC anyways? As this feature allows lossless audio from your Blu-ray player, Apple TV, and or gaming console to travel through the TV and eventually to the soundbar with no loss of quality. But, 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 that soundbar eARC port only really matters if your TV also has eARC, which it may very well not if bought before 2020. Yes, yes, even I have pre-2020 TVs in my home's conservation wing, so I suppose there are a few eARC-less TVs out there ruining everything for some of you. So that brings us to the two HDMI inputs on the C. Three reasons why these inputs may be useful. First, well, it's nice to have more HDMI inputs if your disappointing TV runs out of HDMI slots. Second, plugging audio sources directly into the soundbar may offer more flexibility to make your setup look reasonable um, from a wire management standpoint, limiting the number of wires hanging off your TV. Third, and maybe most important, if your TV does not have eARC, it provides a way to get your lossless sound right on the bar without having your archeological dig of a TV downgrading the sound as it goes through the TV's ancient non-enhanced arc port. So a downer and upper in regards to the Samsung HDMI inputs. Downer, Samsung is still capping the pass-through at 60 Hertz 4K. I think there's a 0% chance this doesn't change next year. So congrats buyers of the future. Hope this message reaches you in good spirits. The upper, it passes Dolby Vision unofficially. I think Samsung's too cheap to pay the license fees. 
and HDR10+. In short, Samsung ensures a critical sound capability and convenience that Sonos doesn't. The C gets two points. Sound adjustments. Okay, with Samsung, it's really broad and somewhat confusing as there seems to be overlap in features. Here is a broad list, which a lot of this is kind of self-explanatory, though I'll try to elaborate on the less obvious stuff. Okay, with room tuning, it used to be that you had auto EQ and automated room tuning sequence that involve the system making funny noises while sub-module microphones were employed to improve bass response. With the Q990C, that is now gone and replaced with SpaceFit Sound Pro, which combines with SpaceFit Sound Plus and auto EQ using mics in the soundbar and bass module to continually adjust sound. Yes, automatically to account for changes in the room acoustics. So enable SpaceFit Sound Pro here in the SmartThings app and life should just kind of magically improve. Samsung is claiming that the bass performance is significantly improved over the B, whatever that means, due to its increased leveraging of neural engines or AI. Let's just say the don't ask too many questions black box. You have four global sound modes, which here you go. I spend pretty much all my time on adaptive sound, which kind of analyzes the sound signals and adjusts content automatically. So this is more of a real-time audio adjuster, maybe specific to the content signals, where SpaceFit Sound Pro is an adjuster based on room acoustics. If you leave sound mode on standard, which you probably won't because it doesn't auto upscale to use all the drivers and channels, you have seven EQ bands with which to play. If you are not on standard, you are limited to two bands, bass and treble. In terms of dialogue enhancements, you have a, I suppose, more sophisticated option, Active Voice Amplifier, or AVA, using some form of AI to subtly differentiate dialogue from background, and a hammer option here that completely tears up the sound but definitely makes dialogue obvious. Yes, if you have a 2023 TV, you can access the most advanced form of Q-Symphony, where your TV speakers get to be in the band. I don't have a 2023 Samsung TV. I have a 21 and a 22 and another 22 and another 21, but not a 23. I've never found the function all that remarkable or even necessarily noticeable at higher volumes. And I don't like mixing speakers with wide gaps in quality, but give it a try if you can. I've heard mixed opinions on this. Let me know what you think. Sonos doesn't do sound modes. As I've said before, Sonos probably thinks choosing sound modes is broken for the typical customer. And the sound should always just have the Sonos sheen, which requires taking options away from Sonos customers. Overall, Samsung offers a lot more control than Sonos, but there are a few Sonos adjustments, particularly in the home theater space, that are perhaps worth mentioning. When streaming music, you can use your rear speakers as ambient or full playback machines. You can preset the volume of the rears depending on whether it's a TV or streaming audio source. And you can clarify the distance of the rear speakers from the listener. EQ channel controls are limited to bass, treble, and height audio. And yes, Sonos also offers night mode for quieter listening and dialogue mode. Both do what they're supposed to do fairly effectively. Sonos also has this loudness feature that I think probably one in 20 can guess what it does. So if you're listening at a low volume, bass and select treble frequencies are boosted to make them more audible without dramatically increasing overall volume, making certain kinds of details easier to hear. For room tuning, your only option is true play and it's only available to those that have not succumbed to the dark forces of Android. I think Samsung gets the point here for providing more tools, but mostly for allowing all users to room tune, taking away the phone requirements, and not making customers debase themselves through yet another two minute awkward sound worshiping ritual. Wireless connectivity. Both systems support AirPlay 2. Samsung supports Chromecast in select regions, 
Sonos supports streaming direct from provider servers. Samsung, Bluetooth. So yes, Sonos leans more premium. It has the highest highs in terms of opportunity if you pay for music streaming services. Samsung leans more populist with Bluetooth, making sure anything you want, regardless of phone, can find its way onto the bar. Each system gets a one point snack. Controls, let's start with Samsung. We got the bar, remote, and app. So some high level lowdowns on the bar. The buttons, they're clickety, not capacitive, which is a bit of a zag when everyone else is zigging. You have an action button that awakens the bar. And if you hold it long enough, Alexa wakes up. Hello. Hello. I'm having the best day ever. If you're a Barbie fan, check out my new Barbie theme. If you don't like the bar listening in on your conversations, this is the button for you. Off. Mic on. The remote, like the rest of the hardware, is unchanged and exactly what you would expect if you've owned a Samsung soundbar or TV in the last few years. Frequent actions like inputs are front and center. Less frequent setting menu selections uh, require a bit more interaction with the remote and bar display. I'm still very ruffled uh, that I can't get an input button on my Samsung TV remote like I have for my Samsung soundbar. The SmartThings app experience is fairly simple as it controls only one system at a time and it's not managing multi-room options, etc., and does not have any integrated music streaming services to contend with. If the app is not connecting to the bar, do a bar power cycle, there's a 90% chance that'll fix it. I've only had to do that once in the few weeks I've had the system, which I will call better than average reliability. One thing that kind of irks me about the SmartThings app is how quickly it kicks you out of the bar control environment back to the main screen if you're switching between apps. So I hope they can kind of make that a better experience. All right, with Sonos, you have controls on the speakers and you have an app. So on the bar and surrounds, you can control volume, play pause, skip tracks, and join streams from other rooms. Sonos does not provide a remote. Again, 98% of the time you just control volume and the few times you wanna dig deeper, well, your phone is probably in your hand or pocket or no more than three inches away. Personally, I'm never upset when I get to skip a new remote. The Sonos app, it's reference level when it comes to controlling smart speakers. It's well-designed and has benefited from focused updates and design improvements over the years, kind of following a single vision. And it maintains these benefits while having the hardest task as it has the capacity to support many different speaker configurations in parallel and also supports media browsing across many services. It's an impressive product. Very apples and oranges here. I think both do a good job of supporting their feature set with the chosen controls. A point for each. The displays may be worth discussing. Samsung with the Q990B did make the extremely bold decision to move the display to where a customer can see it. And they also freed it from its micro Game Boy screen. It's not very wide, so it requires a fair bit of scrolling, but it goes away. I think it's fair to say the display is more readable than average from across the room. There's also an array of LEDs that sit below the display to confirm that Alexa has been awoken. Sonos on the Arc, the display supports brand consistency, basically there to let you know that something is happening. Uh, for example, solid green means the speakers are muted. You also may look for other kinds of color patterns to determine setup state, which would be made clear in instructions on the phone. I'd say no color is particularly obvious without explanation, which is why Sonos has a cheat sheet. So I'm gonna move away from my more neutral stance here. As someone who's kind of interested in what the soundbar is doing, I do find traditional displays useful. It could very well be Sonos made the right decision going minimal for design and brand purposes, but they already got points for that. A point to the Q990C for not playing hard to get with display information. Voice assistants, this is a funny category. Having been in numerous homes, I found scenarios where 
People can't stop yelling at voice assistants, including all the kids. In households where no such thing would ever, ever, never, ever happen. So the first people, the yelling types, keep making me talk about this. The Q990C. Alexa, Alexa. performance is perfectly fine. Play the music. voice mics are good enough so you are heard from across the room. Requests are granted with minimal trouble. Sonos takes voice assistants more seriously, offering three options. So Alexa, Google Assistant, and Sonos Voice Control, making it more likely you are able to access your preferred service. Sonos obviously comes out on top here, and some of you will appreciate that. Sonos wins a hard one point. At this point, the score is lopsided. Sonos has put up a fairly pathetic showing. It's less feature rich, but you have to be more rich to buy it. And I've been admitting for years that Sonos falls behind Samsung sound in particular when it comes to cinema performance. So why have any Arc systems been sold when Samsung has so many obvious advantages? Why have I bought two Arcs? I'm smart. Well, other than style, which is a factor, I think to a large extent it comes down to ecosystem and cascading benefits. When you buy the Q990B, you are more or less buying a bundle. Each piece is meant to exclusively serve the home theater pairing. Take the soundbar away, and you have some curvy paperweights with completely unnecessary acoustic lenses. Samsung has a huge ecosystem, but their audio ecosystem is technically very lame. I'll freely admit that this weakness matters very little for many use patterns, but to me, it matters quite a bit as I shift and mix and match components all over the house all the time, which is probably unusual. Just sticking with home theater, the system we're assessing here, unlike with Samsung, if you take away the soundbar, instead of being left with dust collectors, you have a stunning 3D music stereo pair with sub. There are a plurality of options for repurposing each component. This is a unique perk when buying a Sonos product. It's pretty clear Sonos offers unsurpassed flexibility in pairing and grouping components and the ease of streaming music in multiple locations throughout the home. When you buy a Sonos home theater system, you are investing in that home theater system, but also a more capable home audio system where all the components can cooperate in some form. Samsung doesn't even attempt to compete in this arena. The integrated audio service ecosystem is unprecedented in number and offers a cross-service search that provides results from many services all at once, which is not normal. Yes, many will say, who cares about service integration? You can AirPlay or Bluetooth audio to the Q990C. Fair enough. However, that does exclude customers from high res and 3D audio. Also, streaming audio from a device like your phone takes over your device's audio. So you get a phone call or want to watch one of those 13 second twerky videos, the music everyone else was listening to is disrupted. Streaming from other company servers is much more luxurious than streaming through the phone. I would know, I'm very luxurious. So as all your Sonos products are on a single network and controlled by the same app, there is a nice economy of scale when it comes to improvements. Updates are applied to the whole system and to select components that need to be updated in one fell swoop. App upgrades are going to apply to all your components more evenly, like music search optimizations, streamlining speaker setup, quicker access to EQ controls. The list goes on, but you can always read about the latest updates here, link in the description. Further, when you buy a component, let's say the Arc in this case, it's more likely to be a flagship soundbar for more than a year. So your Arc gets that newest best thing attention much longer than any one Samsung model will ever get, allowing Sonos time to really mature the software and generally put less pressure on Sonos to withhold key new features that perhaps Samsung may keep exclusive to the next version. That being said, the Q990C is a much more evolved animal than the first iteration of this form factor, the Q950T, back in 2020. So with the C, you are benefiting from a long period of refinement, for sure. That should be considered when buying. Though, 
It's a form factor, I believe, that is going to change next year significantly, which brings in that tension. Buy the mature old model or wait for the hot mess new sexy thing. That can be a tough one. Ecosystem has huge appeal and everyone knows it, even if it appeals a little less to you personally. Awarding three points to Sonos. Usability and reliability. You know, I didn't really have notable issues thus far with the C. Setup was breezy and the app functions. In terms of the rear cutouts, I didn't have the problem with the B and still don't with the C. And I generally consider myself to be fairly sensitive to these kinds of failings, which is one of the benefits of being a chronic grumpy person. Probably the biggest issue is that if I start plugging things into the TV and the soundbar, this is not unique to Samsung, lots of people can't figure out how to get to the correct source. So I need to set the TV HDMI to, huh? Then the bar HDMI to, I might need two remotes. Uh, there are 50 remotes down here. Daddy, I can't hear anything. It's a popular catchphrase. I've said this before, but I think it's worth reiterating. With the Arc system, the bar doesn't become some additional thing you have to manage. Of all the sound bars I've fondled, I think it does the best job of disappearing and becoming an extension of the TV. As you are here for my opinions, I think it's appropriate to point out that due to usability concerns with other bars, I basically ban them from my main living spaces and only go with Sonos Audio everywhere but the basement here. Sonos gets two points for usability. Yeah, yeah, hashtag never, never enough tech. Sound quality, the Q990C. Just like last year, the sound is undeniably impressive. Good for you. The C delivers on the promise of room filling sound with ease. That is, the sound is formidable before this bar gets past the warm-up volume phase. The C, with all of its drivers pointed in so many directions, well, it's easy to buy into the fantasy that the front soundstage includes separate, generously spaced left and right speakers. But when I go back and listen to the A9, I'm reminded that that fantasy is a fantasy. The effects are sharp and incisive, ninja-like, they cut and then vanish. Directional effects come across as well-coordinated. In general, effects also seem well-placed in space. The C's volume goes from zero to 100. Around 40 is about as loud as I can stand, just for a short time. Nonetheless, I was not getting a sense of a dramatic increase in compression or distortion at those levels. If you buy this, be confident your system can get far louder than you would ever need it to, in the good way, unless you want to use it to scare a neighbor, but you know, that would be very bad. I have found that quality systems sound more flattering with a big open space while lesser systems get exposed. I was far more impressed with the C sound down here, even with all of its acoustic no-nos, than this still rather large, regularly shaped bedroom. A goal with the C, communicated by multiple Samsung sources, including press releases and customer services, smoother bass performance, integrating it more gracefully, intelligently into the overall sound. Well, I think there is an argument that they may have achieved that, but for those that have been concerned that the Q900 series submodules have been skipping too many leg days, Lacking the brawn of a JBL bar or Klipsch Cinema 1200 sub, for example, I fear the latest algorithms will not alleviate, but perhaps even exasperate those concerns. The bass was never overly present and always comes across as a team player. It's not a showboat. It doesn't have the physical presence that the bigger boys bring. Now, let me be clear, I think this is a better way to air than going hulked out without the proper restraints. Yes, it did dawn on me to try jacking up the woofer level and bass in the EQ settings. This helped a bit, but even with the bass level all the way up, it does seem Samsung is leashing the sub, perhaps even in a manner they weren't last year. But again, for those that have been concerned with the Samsung sub offering, well, there's always next year.
Next, yes, even with the C, the sound can at times be very soundbar centric. As impressive as this system is, and I think this is intrinsic to all soundbars and admittedly exasperated when I use it with a 150 inch projector screen, the really quiet, intimate moments are just a bit too soundbar focused. Gonna reference Blade Runner 2049 as the opening scenes kind of provide all you need to judge a system. Only half joking about that. Anyway, the boiling pot, which is a metaphor, and dialogue, as crisp and live as it sounds, it feels stuck in the confines of the bar space. Even if the sound is very front focused, which it needs to be from time to time, I don't want my audio world ever to feel that narrow. But to maintain a balanced account here, I will point out that the majority of time, the audio space rendered feels very generous, particularly with soundscapes, sweeping sound effects, transitions, all pushing that wow factor. Height effects were compelling in particular when they were directional. Rain, per usual, was very convincing. The many voices from street advertisements in 2049 sounded hyper real and very multi-directional. Sonos, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the two systems are close, but having both in-house, it is made plain, again, that the ARC soundbar is a lesser entity than the C bar and is the clear weak link when directly challenging the C. In the smaller moments where the sound is limited almost exclusively to the front, the full expression is less. Less rich, more compressed, smaller, physically in that the sound takes up less space, and metaphysically as it's not as detailed or articulated. Not as interesting. An example, Dune, when Paul is talking to his mom, the one that is 13 years older than him at breakfast, the arc, which is pretty much doing all the work, comes across more like a TV enhancer where the C, with all of its detailed expression, comes across more as a home theater system, even while both sound physically narrow, you know, largely constrained by the bar. The C is a vibrato singer. The arc sound bar doesn't have that range of expression. Less body, less depth. I'm being a little rough with the arc because I'm comparing it to, I think, maybe the second best bar in the business. The best, I suppose, being the one that costs $2,500 that can't seem to make friends with any rear speakers. However, when considering the totality of the sound situations, not just these narrow, quiet moments, the ARC system, and this needs emphasis, with the 300s often lands on top. Let's just say with the 300s, the more I get to know them, the more it becomes clear just how revolutionary a product these are for Sonos, but perhaps also the broader soundbar system landscape. First, the 300s just bring a whole lot of extra volume, yes, loudness, but also space and intensity, fire. In those tense, sweeping cinematic moments, let's say the sounds of the spice harvesting machine um, in the beginning of Dune, the 300s push out the rear soundstage and gives the sound a kinetic, hyper-real detail that really revs up the Sonos thrill factor to a completely different plane. My first memory of the 300s and what made me sure that these are different were gunshots in the Revenant raid scene. The 300s rendered the kabooms with such vigor and nakedness, it sounded like a dude walked up next to my face and shot his gun. Maybe part of the surprise was Sonos going rugged when I've grown accustomed to the upper middle class family man vibe. The 300s help the arc system make up a whole lot of ground it loses to the sea when considering bar on bar. I will admit the performance of the 300s does make me pine a bit and ask, why can't the arc do that? Where is the Sonos soundbar worthy of its rear speakers? As I've mentioned in previous videos, the system hierarchy is definitely flattened. The 300s are not nearly as deferential as the C rears. So what about those 3D effects? Do the 300s give the ARC system a better bubble? Yes, 
and after multiple reviews, I would say the 300s elevate Atmos performance beyond the Q990C, which for context, I have never given Samsung the soundbar Atmos crown, but it is certainly a top level performer. Here are a few scenes where I believe Sonos 3D effects truly shined. First, Blade Runner, when Kay was landing his flying cop bounty hunter car at Sapper Morton's house, you got a convincing and sustained height effect that was also quite directional. Second, about 20 minutes into 1917, there are two planes that fly overhead, back to front. What really struck me about this particular height effect with Sonos was how far back it was able to render the effect. Generally, I'm kind of used to right over the head and in front of me with these kinds of effects, but these planes were first heard way behind me, faintly. I've, I've never experienced such a convincing distant rear effect. I mean, there was a wall behind me. The 300s increase the plane volume until right over my head, and the plane sounds continued and faded as they got further away in front with the arc taking over more of the load. The ramp up and directionality was delicious with the arc system, taking this effect and amongst others beyond the capability of the C. And for whatever reason, the 300s just pump up the hyper realness, rendering an unbelievably believable old plane engine sound. Next, about 27 minutes into 1917, when that adorable little rat set off the tripwire in the enemy trench dugout man cave thing, the intensifying cascading collapse was convincing. The 300s just really sell the physicality and the persistent downward motion of the imploding shelter. The Sono system based performance with the 300s is more intense than the C's. In particular, if you decide to go with two subs, which why are we even haggling about price at this point? An example I'd like to call out again is in 1917, about five to 10 minutes into the movie, as the scene becomes more ominous, which is to be expected when transitioning from heaven to hell. There is this persistent low rumble in the score. The arc system, in part due to the weight of the 300s, does a better job of sustaining that low rumble and making it feel penetrating, all-encompassing. The 300s do kind of bring a mini sub feel to the back. So I want to talk about volume again. One of the ways you know the C has a more serious bar is that it can just get far louder and at any particular volume level, the C bar is doing it with less compression and distortion. I found setting the C to 40% volume sounded equivalent to Sonos's 80%, though I'm not sure why you would want to go louder than that, even in a large space um, behind me, which is where I mostly test. So while I think the arc system actually wins in the thrilling sections, the C is outputting higher quality audio. I think it's pretty plain to say that it's a more beautiful, well-ordered sound than the ARC system. It's less experimental. As I have stated quite loudly, I think the 300s do kind of scream out for a higher fidelity, higher tier bar. Sonos has to know the ARC just isn't going to hack it for something like three to six more years as the flagship soundbar. Whatever the follow-up bar is, it needs to follow the 300s lead and offer something decidedly Sonos, but more substantial which they have proven they can do with the 300s. I think this enhanced piece would easily move it above the sea at just about every level. But what I really want to happen is Sonos to offer a three piece solution up front, two 300s and some kind of spatial center channelish hardware in the middle, if they really wanted to make an all around convincing argument for top spot in a post dragon world. Sound winner. Gonna give it to Samsung. Once again, for a really kick butt sounding system with impressive fundamentals and whatever the fourth version of a series gets you in refinement. Five points. But the Sono system is far from a loser in this comparison. It wins on a number of dimensions, in particular, the big moments sound. And the rest of the time, it sounds dang good. 
four points for Sonos. Oops, I almost forgot about music. For a longer discussion, I would recommend these videos. My Q990B discussion still holds, I think. I would like to point out that these are home theater, not music configurations. There are not many distinctions I would draw in the music comparison that I haven't called out already. If you want a richer, I'd say more coherent sound, go with the C. If you want a more Dolby Atmos 3D oriented sound with maybe a little less substance, but that's still way fun, go with Sonos. Per usual, I'm most impressed with audio in these systems when fed via HDMI. Some new Atmos tracks I didn't totally hate comes from the new Dave Matthews Band album, Walk Around the Moon. Gotta be some of the best adult contemporary in the last few months for sure. Not sorry. <laughs> Buying advice. If you have no interest in ecosystem or having your bar talk to other speakers around the house, strongly consider Samsung. Yes, get it over the JBL bar 1300, 1300X, any LG bar, the Ambios, um, the A9s, uh, it's a coin flip. I still prefer the A9s, but I know very well they don't technically sound the best. If you can get the B for a few hundred bucks cheaper, which my audience seems to have Olympic level speed at snatching up good deals, go with the B, though I think the C does sound an inch better. A big part of the advice here is that I did not encounter any horrific usability or reliability experiences, which despite my family's trouble figuring things out, always worked for me and left me with no rage experiences. The Q990C is a, if not the prudent purchased for Premier Soundbar System Sound. If you put a particular emphasis on the value of high intensity 3D sound experiences, this system is now at the elite level where it was not with the ones. If you know your heart belongs to Sonos, Get the ARC and 300s. This is not a system I think people will regret purchasing. Okay, I think I've put in a solid, heartfelt effort in making my video too long, once again. Maybe one day I can afford a producer or editor or someone that knows how to make videos. If you're still watching, I am wildly grateful and perplexed. Make sure your kids aren't starving or whatever. I'm still working towards my 20,000 sub goal by 2024. Um, I have been reliably informed that when you get 20,000 subs, you get 20% better looking. And I think we could all really benefit from that. So, you know, for the greater good. Thanks for watching, gonna wrap this up. Catch you on the next one.